everybody hope you guys are doing good today just heading on down to see my dad with elijah he's crashed out back there we're gonna go down and burn a couple of brush piles and pick up some limbs that fell down in dad's yard and try to get it cleaned up a little bit down there maybe cut a little bit of firewood from the fallen trees while we're down there and hey just wanted to take this uh, time to do a quick little youtube video and some stuff and one of the topics that I wanted to do is sort of like, uh, I think it might help everybody out a little bit here today as far as techniques goes, is why you should learn to fish techniques that you hate to fish, or why you should why you should get good at techniques that you don't like. Um, because, you know, fishing, like I said, I always say, one of the big things I say about bass fishing, you know, it's one of the most complicated uh, sports that there is simply because there's so many different variables there's so many different conditions but if you're gonna get good as an angler um, there's really two ways to do that uh, and there's two different applications as far as being good Do you want to be good and win tournaments or do you want to be good and be consistent in tournaments if you want to be good in winning tournaments um, you need to focus your energy on becoming a specialist um, on specific techniques whatever that may be but there's really a handful of techniques that produce wins and that is you know being really good at like pitching and flipping you know shallow cover cranking shallow cover um, or being good with your electronics offshore so if you want to really get good and win tournaments you know be a uh, specialist but if you want to be consistent um, in your fishing doesn't matter if you fish tournaments or, or don't fish tournaments um, the thing you have to do is you have to learn to get good doing things you hate to do in fishing. And because what's going to happen is there's going to be situations in your fishing where there's going to be situational events where you may be on a certain pattern. Say, for example, uh, you're on a strong uh, crank and bite on rip wraps, that type of stuff. And, and you're doing really good in the tournament or you got it going pretty good. And say the first day or two of the tournament, you did really good crank and rip wrap because there was a 15 mile an hour wind on it. And then uh, all of a sudden the wind dissipated off the rip wrap. It got, you know, glass calm on the rip wrap and they wouldn't buy the crankbait and you had to do something different. And the technique that's gonna produce into those conditions, say for example, is a Ned rig on a super light head, like a, you know, one tenth ounce or something like that. You have got to be able to take a technique like say you were power cranking a square bill crankbait on that rip wrap, you've got to be able to shift gears 360 degrees and put on six pound line with a little Ned rig if the conditions dictate that. And it doesn't really matter what that is. You know, for example, my the, my least favorite technique is a Carolina rig. I just, there's everything about the Carolina rig I don't like. And initially back when the Carolina rig first started out, the only guys that really threw it were these, these a lot of the guys that you saw smoking cigarettes, sitting down in their seat, in a butt seat, and they're chunking this Carolina rig out off Main Lake Points, you know, back when it started, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I got this, this, deal in my mind that this Carolina rig was basically, uh, you know, a, a technique that made people that weren't very good anglers do really good in tournaments. And that's the reputation I got. But as I realized, and I found out over the years, there's applications for a Carolina rig that you just can't deny. There's certain situations when the bass are set up on certain type of structures where you need to throw that thing. So I forced myself to get good at the Carolina rig. I went out and I studied the technique. I studied the, the terminal tackle setup with it. I experimented with lead weights versus brass weights. I experimented with clickers and with different bead colors and different leader links and different pound test leader links and different rod actions to throw it at and different lures to throw on things. So I, I forced myself to learn how to catch bass on that Carolina rig and some of the biggest bass that I've caught and some of the tournaments that I've almost won in my career have come on a Carolina rig. Even though I, I hate fishing the thing, I can't stand it. Even to this day, I don't like fishing it. But it's just one of those deals where you have to force yourself to do some, some, to think, some of the things you don't like to do. And the thing that I would, that I would suggest on this about how to approach this is take, for example, name like five techniques that are in your wheelhouse you know whether it be offshore fishing 
whether it be shallow flipping or top water, whatever like that. And then just take that technique and go the complete 360 with it. You know, or the complete, yeah, 360 with it. And, and find out something that, that, that the conditions that work the way that you like to fish for your favorite technique. Just imagine the conditions that are completely opposite that and, and the adjustments that you'd have to make with that technique. And go out there and learn those techniques. If you don't like the fish and jerk bait, if you hate fish and jerk baits, get out there and take nothing but jerk bait with you. With you. I mean, if you don't like graphing offshore for you know suspended bass, you know, get out there and don't even take a rod with you. Just graph around all day long and look at those. You know, look for suspended fish. Whatever technique that it is you feel like you're weak in or that you don't like to fish, um, try to get good at it. And. Uh, that is how you're going to uh, become a versatile angler. That's how you're going to, you know, be more consistent in the long term, and it's going to add up to a lot more fish than you probably miss otherwise. But there's a fine line in competition as far as, you know, being a specialist and being a versatile angler. So that's sort of something everybody has to balance out. And if you're just a weekend dude and you don't fish tournaments um, and you just want to catch more bass in general, you know, you can try some of those techniques that you don't like. And, you know, if you, if you don't like that, if you just, if you like throwing the crankbait all the time, you know, stay with that too. It's really whatever that you like to do. But uh, overall, you know, what I wanted to suggest in this particular, you know, quick little tip is that force yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. That's the only way that you grow as a person at anything. That's really the only way you grow to become better at any sport, including bass fishing, is you have to get outside of your comfort zone to some extent. Not to say that, you know, it's mandatory for everybody to do that, but if you really want to continue evolving and growing as an angler, becoming better, and, you know, kicking your expectations and your skills up to the next notch, um, you know, you're gonna have to force yourself to do things you don't like to do fishing. So anyway, just a quick little tip here today. I thought I'd throw that out there and um, hope you guys are doing good. See y'all later. See you.